Alright kid, the government doesn't want you to know this, but the traffic lights in the street are free. You can just pick them up and take them home. I've got eight so far and they just keep putting up new ones. Alright, let's take a step back, because I'm guessing you might have a couple of questions at this point, like What's a traffic light organ? Or why do you have a bath full of traffic lights? The answer to that one being, what are you, a fucking cop? Don't worry, promise we'll get to it. But you know what, first things first. What is a traffic light organ? Well, this is a light organ. Also known as a color organ, it's an entertainment device from back in the 70s which gives an easy way to add a light show to your music, promising a color concert with not only razzle, but also dazzle. Now these things come in a couple of different variations, but basically they all kind of just work the same. Take an audio input and use it to modulate the power arriving at different sets of colored light. So as you can imagine, loud sound equals bright light. Now that was pretty darn exciting back then, but you know today that's just kind of what a lot of Bluetooth speakers already do. So let's make something a little less boring, and that is where these bad boys come in. You see, a while ago my town started replacing all of the old traffic lights to a lot less power hungry LED ones, and all of these old guys went to the landfill. So you know, long story short, there was a discount, and because I make great financial decisions, now I have 8. So, everyone on board for the plan? No? Well, here it goes. We are going to wire up a grid of these guys with new lights and then somehow connect them to a computer to program some light shows. So, first step, get the old electronics out because half of it's broken and these bulbs take 40 watts each. We are going to put in some new shiny high power LEDs. If you've never seen the inside of a traffic light before, that's basically what it looks like. Pretty simple, you just kinda have to pop off these covers and inside you have a light bulb with a reflecting cone to bundle the light and wires that lead out. But we don't really need that. While we're here, remove the last 50 years of cancer dust as well, and with all the old stuff gone, time for some new lights. I'm going to use these ones right here, just pause the video if you want to know specifics. Sadly, these are just going to fry instantly if you don't regulate them, so that means time to solder resistor to every single one of them. Also, we are going to 3D print some new sockets to fit the LEDs, heatsinks, and resistor, so they just kind of fit together in the reflector like this. So, all that's left to do is add some new wiring to each of the compartments, pop the LEDs into the sockets, and bam, you got yourself a functioning traffic light. I spray paints in my wipe because I watched too much Scott E. Jan, but you know, that part is optional. Alright, so this is what it looks like finished. Pretty nice. Got Patrick over here, being chilling. And for now the cables go over here, but yeah, I think it's time to program these guys. Alright, so, sounds nice and easy, but how the hell do I even connect these to my computer? Well, we'll be using these boxes right here and something called DMX512, or Digital Multiplex, which is a digital signaling protocol, but don't worry about it if you know MIDI for music instruments, this is basically the same thing, but for lights, so if you ever wondered how stage lighting works, that's with this protocol. So power in here, DMX signal in here, and lights out here. So now I can even use the RGB channels for one of the traffic lights each if I just connect each light to one channel, so instead of RGB, we would have our YG. And because this box has 24 channels on it, I can even power up to 8 traffic lights on it. Anyway, to keep the setup mobile, I built this very TSA friendly case with my DMX boxes and the power supply, where you can just plug everything in nice and easy from the outside. Also now that this is done, I thought, hmm, if DMX is just like MIDI, maybe I can just translate the MIDI input from my instruments into DMX, so we can actually play the lights like an organ. So all we need is some code that translates MIDI to DMX. But since I'm dumb and suck at coding, I just follow the good old coding tradition of copy-pasting somebody else's work, and shout out to Bass Jensen here, who designed this little Arduino gizmo which takes your computer MIDI output and turns it into a DMX signal. So I just followed his tutorial which you can watch here, and look at that, I can finally play the traffic light organ. So right now all the lights are arranged on my keyboard in halftone steps, like this. Uh, don't ask me why it starts at C-sharp, I think the first channel is blank as a control channel or something. Anyway, this is pretty fun to play around with and see what chords make which shapes. I can even draw some little patterns in my music workstation. But if we want to make some more complex stuff, we are going to have to find something else, because I don't really want to sit here and spend 5 hours drawing MIDI notes every time I want a little animation. Also, this was supposed to be audio reactive, even the guys in the 70s got that far, so we are going to need a different program for that. I tried to make this work with Blender for a month or two, writing custom code and using add-ons to transform animations into MIDI data, and I love Blender, but let me tell you, that sucked. It was pretty clunky and it just crashed half of the time. Eventually though, while looking for solutions online, I stumbled on this. 
This is Malcolm. Malcolm works at Derivative, Inc., and they make software called Touch Designer. And Touch Designer is the brain behind the whole show that powers the big cube thing. <coughs> Thank you, Deadmau5. So, Touch Designer, what does it do? Well, Touch Designer is a program that lets you create light shows, visuals, and much more. Basically, it lets you translate different types of information into each other. So like audio to video, or graph to table data, or in our case, MIDI. So I just watched 20 hours of tutorials and built this little setup. Now, this might look a little confusing at first, but in a nutshell, imagine that we want our lights to play this little hypnotoid animation. What we do is spread a bunch of points in the shade of our grid. If you remember, it looks a little like this. Anyway, if we now let each one sample the surrounding area, we get 15 squares, one for each LED. Now, imagine these in a 3D space with their height scaled according to their brightness. Looks a bit messy, but if we line them up in a row, you can already imagine we can just use this as a graph for our LED power output. Imagine 0 being completely dark and 1 being maximum power. So this is basically what we are sending out to our 15 DMX channels, which then regulates the brightness of the LEDs. If you're interested to learn more about this, I can recommend Electronaut's excellent tutorial series, or this one tutorial on mapping LEDs, which basically explains my whole setup here. But in short, what I have right here is a couple of different clusters of functions, so purple make my video texture, blue make a grid of points, and green is put them on top of each other and ship them out as mini channels. And yeah, I added some more stuff to let the brightness be regulated by our audio inputs, but enough nerd stuff for now. Let's make some music and video textures and see how it looks. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you like the song I wrote for the end, I'll probably put it on Spotify right here. Right now I'm building an LED wall in my kitchen, so feel free to subscribe if you want to see that. And yeah, see you later. Dog Traffic Light Patrick Stinky Dog